Hello everyone, welcome to Coffee Cup Enlightenment. Today's video is going to be the most important video ever. Or the most important video you would ever watch. And the reason why is um, it's going to get to the absolute crust of um, the human dilemma. Which has never really been probably this accurately or simply described before but basically there is us as contentless formless consciousness it is life itself and it is this life that we are which is the same life that we are that we were born as a baby which didn't have any content to it yet which identifies with content and gives life to this content and makes a pseudo identity a substitute identity out of this content and and um this is what this content based identity looks like and it grows as you get older bigger and bigger and the more we focus on it and believe it to be who we are the bigger it gets and the way the current state of humanity is now it's like this is how this substitute identity is blocking our vision at the moment it's right in front of our face and we mistake this substitute identity as our identity rather than recognizing ourselves as formless contentless consciousness the life giver of this content based substitute identity um, it is not our identity it is the life giver to it um, and but that's what's happening our vision's been blocked by it and all our focus is given to this substitute identity and what's happening is it speaks on our behalf it makes judgments on our behalf and through its judgments it feels disturbed on our behalf and because we're so identified with this substitute identity making these judgments feeling its own reaction to its own judgments and we're absolutely one million percent convinced that it is us doing all of this this is the greatest dilemma and um, anyone any teacher that sort of describes our identity that has any slight reference to this substitute identity for instance you might hear someone say that we're lazy or we're this or that we're that in a negative tone then that's false it's, it's not a correct teaching um, you'll hear many teachers including myself many times you I, you, I stop and correct myself whenever I make a reference to our identity as being this substitute identity in any way um, our formless consciousness the, the the truth of who we are is untouchable because it doesn't consist of any content it is only this substitute identity which is subject to content which then can be diminished in content and feel incomplete is is the subject of the disturbed one it is the disturbed one not us and it is our identification with this disturbed pseudo character which gives us an experience that we are being disturbed and unless this is brought to our attention that who we are is untouchable we will spend another 50 million years in this uh, state of sleep where we over and over like Groundhog Day continually identify with this substitute identity as being our identity and never ever get to experience the truth of who we are which is untouchable uh, be ye whole like your father in heaven as mentioned in the Bible there's many other um, lines in the Bible which point to the truth of who you are you are made in the light of the father or something like that I'm not an expert on the Bible but um, there's many, many references. I'm not a religious person either. But there's many, many references to many a religions that already state who we are. It's ever perfect, ever untouchable, ever whole and immaculately. And, and there's, uh, the state of enlightenment is not a state that you get to. We already are enlightened. It's our, it's our state that we're born when we're born as a baby. You can say we're almost enlightened. We, we are in line in the most closest to the enlightened state when we're born as a baby because we haven't created this pseudo character yet 
Um, and and then, um, but we, but we don't know ourselves as this this uh, consciousness life giver uh, yet. So you can technically say we're not fully evolved in our awakening yet. Um, but um, yeah, but that's the great dilemma. Um, nearly every single word spoken in the reference to emotions and disturbances is the word of the pseudo identity. It's not our. It's not us speaking. Um, it's our pseudo identity making judgments. Um, our pseudo identity reacting and feeling to its own judgments, which distorts reality and perception because new reality is is perfectly neutral all the time. It's like there's there's hundreds of things or probably dozens of things throughout your day that do not affect you. That's because your substitute identity is not participating in any judgments about what's going on. Whereas if you look at your friend next to you, they're disturbed. And you're thinking, hang on, we're both in the same situation here. We both had this happen to us just now. Why are you disturbed and I'm not? Or vice versa. Maybe... Um, there's a there's an image perception of disturbance within you about something that's going on right now in your environment, but your friend or your family member is saying, "What's going on? You know why, why why are you feeling this way, Pete? It's no big deal, you know." But in their eyes, their 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 substitute identity is not making this filtered disturbance perception, or it's not, or the, the substitute identity isn't being disturbed. Therefore, their experience of reality is is neutral so this is proof of um how there's dozens to even hundreds of things that go on in your day that there is no disturbance it's just something that you don't even look at or consider it's just and if you bet if you were around people and you see they're being in a disturbed state then you can realize that there's something going on here how come two people can be in the same room experience the same situation happen to them yet you have two different experiences happen and you've seen this throughout your whole life. Um, we know when our what what certain triggers our, our substitute identity gets triggered by, but the only way we're going to wake up is is we we need to start looking at saying that that's not me. Um, I haven't really prepared this video much. Um, I, I never really do. I never write anything down. I just do it organically and speak. But um, I might start seeing if I might start writing things down and doing it a little bit more orchestrated and, and, and go through points. But there's, um, you know, lots of things you can do when this substitute identity becomes dis disturbed. The two main things is, number one, bring your attention away from it, which is called meditation. So you focus on, um, just focus on the clouds instead of what's the, the experience. But what I think is even more quicker and powerful is see if you've got enough attention and awareness power within yourself to look at this substitute identity that's being disturbed and number one look at its judgment that it just made to the situation see if you can recognize that what judgment did my substitute identity make just now and and then see if it's possible to feel within yourself is the best word to describe it as you're looking at it which is another word to describe it, which you're not really looking at because there's nothing to look at it's it's an internal thing that we're talking about here but you sort of visualize in your mind's eye this substitute identity which you've identified with your entire life since birth and see if you can see that it is the one being disturbed and it is the one that made the judgment to its own disturbance. Because otherwise, if you go to this therapist and spend a million dollars getting therapy, it's it's the, the substitute identity is the one that's speaking at the therapy session. And that can be useful for now. Um, until some basic level of self-awareness develops within oneself before you, where you can separate and distinguish yourself between you and the substitute, substitute identity, then then therapy can be a useful task. And even that can generate awareness because now you're starting to recognise the repetitive stories and, and, and uh, you know, catalogue the, the, the triggers that, particular trigger situations that trigger this substitute identity but what the therapy doesn't tell you is that's the substitute identity really some therapists may tell you this and, and you might not understand it but i would assume most therapists wouldn't even get into that dialogue they'll, they'll actually say that it's you that's actually disturbed but let's fix you uh, and that's delusional um, they're fixing a ghost 
that, that that's never existed you know as muji says let the medicine take the take let the uh let the ghost take the medicine <laughs> but um you know you, you need nothing of it but that's what's happening uh this is why we are going to continue to stay in a deep 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 sleep for another million years as a collective humanity if we don't individually start to pay attention to what's going on within ourselves if we don't start to recognize there's two things in us there's us which is formless consciousness, untouchable consciousness, ever perfect, ever whole consciousness. The reason why it's whole, it's because it doesn't consist of any objects. Therefore, it's beyond even comprehension of the realm of whole. It's incomprehensible. Whole, whole pertains to the realm of content where you have volume and measurement. There's, you're immeasurable because you don't consist of anything. You are just formless life consciousness itself. That gives life to content-based identity. Now, this content-based identity is here's another strange fact. It can either be a positive pseudo-identity or a negative pseudo-identity. But wait for the kicker. Both of them are false. Whether you are become a master of creating a positive pseudo-identity, it's still a pseudo-identity and it's not who you are. And as long as you stay identified to this extremely positive pseudo-identity, you'll always feel a deep sense of dissatisfaction and incompleteness, which is meant to be there because the, 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 the representation of this substitute identity is incompleteness. Because it can be measured and it consists of content, it will always be subject to incompleteness, always be subject to unwholeness, always subject to never-ending dissatisfaction and a bottomless pit always and its only pathway is eventually that even this positive character will eventually d dissolve and it will eventually go uh, into the negative realm so it's like Eckhart Tolle says it's a sinking ship that you everyone needs to get off of um, you can just do what I'm saying in these videos is just bring awareness to this substitute identity because um, that's its only destiny. Its only destiny is, is drama, reactions, and, con and a never-ending Groundhog Day of repeating the same cycle over and over and being an expression of what it consists of. All the belief structures of, of what this entity consists of will always manifest the reality of what it consists of. You can try your hardest to try to change reality, but you'll never change it if the core of your pseudo-identity is projecting um, its own structure and its very own identity out into the world. And this is the secret to life. He's, he's, um, as Jesus said, deny thyself. He's talking about this pseudo-self. Deny it every day. Every time it gets into reaction. And the most fastest way to disidentify from this pseudo-fake uh, illusionary identity is to smile at it. Genuinely, do it in a fake way if you can't do it genuinely. But see if you can inter. And I'm talking about internal. I'm not talking about external. I'm talking about see if you can visualize this upset pseudo identity within you. Uh, say your name, and this helps bring it up to the surface. Because when you say your name, it triggers the the current version of image that you have in your head of who you think you are. And then and then see if you can smile at this disturbed character and see it's not you. Um, uh, I'm not a Scientologist, but even that's the essence to Scientology with their... I have studied them, and, and the the essence is uh, where you get your pseudo-identity to say the same story about its drama over and over and over again until your consciousness wakes up and sees that's just a story. And then neutral reality is returned back to you. So that's, that's cognitive therapy. Um, L. Ron Hubbard wasn't the inventor of that method. But he decided to make a religion and make billions of dollars out of it. Um, his actual mate, him and his mate actually kind of invented that form of cognitive therapy. Which they call, um, what do they call it? Um, auditing, I think they call it. Yeah, well, auditing. Well, there's probably another word, I forget it now. But that's where, basically you just sit there for like 10 hours and talk to a person who's trained to ask the questions. And repeat the disturbed scenario. Describe how you what you felt, what you touched, what you smelt, what you saw, the, the the sun coming in the light in the window, and all this for, and just 
recall over and over again until a smile appears on the face. And that smile represents the consciousness who you are, freed from its entanglement with form, as Eckhart Tolle says. And that form is the, the pseudo-conceptual identity form. Everyone has this pseudo-identity within you. Um, the only time, I, as I described many times in videos, I, I, I was totally free from this pseudo-identity for one and a half days. This happened a few years ago, so you can say I became fully enlightened. And it happened one day when I woke up in the morning, and as I was opening my eyes, I was sort of coming out of a dream, and in that dream, it wasn't a visual dream, but the, the, the pseudo-identity was fully apparent in front of me. It wasn't identified with me anymore. And, and, and in one second, a million kilograms was lost in an instant. Gone. And that one million kilograms was the, was the weight of the pseudo-identity, which I didn't even know that I was carrying, which all of us are carrying. We're all carrying a million kilograms of weight, even when you feel relaxed, 99.9% .9 of the day, you got no idea what true liberation feels like until you actually experience it. Now, I've said before in videos, I probably experienced it because I had maybe a little bit of a near-death experience. Um, a few years ago, I was, you know, a bit over, I'm a bit overweight, I'm a smoker, or at least my pseudo-identity is. And, um, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So my pseudo identity is a smoker, and and I'm still identified with it, and um, yeah, but I had probably a little bit of breathing things. I noticed I was, you know, probably had like a bit of sleep apnea, and probably triggered a near death experience a few years ago that morning when I woke up, and maybe as I was taking the last few de deep breaths, and I was on the brink of death, uh, probably wasn't that close to it, but it was almost. My brain probably reduced produced DMT which happens at birth and death. They're the only two times it happens. And DMT is like you from the pineal gland, I think it is. Your, it's a chemical produced from the third eye, as they call it. And it opens up your reality to see what's true and what's not. And what was not true was this pseudo-identity plain in my face. And, and what was felt is one million kilograms of weight lifted and, and an indescribable level of peace. And in that second, uh, as as I described in the video, the, 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 the pseudo-identity had its one last scream out. It said, how the fuck we meant to see this? And then it disappeared, gone. And it never spoke for one and a half days, just a little bit it spoke um, in the night. And then, and then it didn't say anything again. But in that time, I got to see what it's like to be in the absence of this pseudo-identity. Um, fantastic that you can do a great job at, you know... Um, being, I don't know, doing meditation or doing psychology and counselling and learning things and helping improve your life and, and make this pseudo-identity um, a little bit more peaceful. And that's what I've been doing the last many years. Um, it's probably reduced by about 90% compared to how I was when I was about 25. Uh, this body's 44 now. So it's it's uh, there's great reductions you can do on a daily basis just to be become mindful of your what's going on within you each day because uh, this pseudo identity for most people it's probably reacting at least 40 times a day uh, and probably even more when you're out in the work environment and mixing with people it triggers even more that way uh, but generally for me if I stay at home all day and there's nothing really going on probably very likely to get maybe one or two disturbances you know per day but Back when I was 25, my, my pseudo-identity would get disturbed at least 40 times a day and very heavily. And it was getting more and more disturbed every year. So for me, there was a great motivation to wake up. Uh, and that's why when I was about 28, I discovered... Uh, about the 27, I got into Anthony Robbins for a few years. And then uh, I got into Eckhart Tolle for about six years. And then now I don't really watch anyone anymore, so... But there's some great teachers I still recommend, uh, like people like um, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now and The New Earth. Um, I listened to that on audio CD in my vehicle when I drove to work every day for six years non-stop. And every time I listened to it, I had an awakening. And every day for the last 15 years, I've been using self-awareness daily, or mindfulness or whatever you want to call it, to look at what's who's being disturbed. And, and it's got so clear now that I can see it's absolutely not me that's disturbed. 
So the times where I used to spend six months in, identified with this disturbed state at a time, uh, back in my 20s, it was a permanent state of identification, where it was a permanent state of disturbance from the moment I woke up in the morning till about 10 p.m. at night, and then it, it, it subsided and went dormant for the last few hours before I went to bed. Uh, and then in my 30s, I started learning, uh, becoming more and more aware, and then where I am now, I, I can pretty much, uh, this disturbed character doesn't get disturbed that much anymore, and when it does, I welcome it, and I try to, and I bring a smile to it, um, and it's very rare now that I, I'm, I'm identified for more than a few days, or a week at most, uh, and it would only be a subtle disturbance identification, and then I'll, and then I'll re-remember again, and see the subtleness of this disturbed character, and I'll use even that and burn it up, and, and when you, able to clearly this is what happens within me when you're able to clearly see and distinguish yourself between you and feel yourself as you and this and see this pseudo character and see it is the one that's disturbed and feel a genuine smile between you and it then it shatters and it releases all that energy that you gave it back to you this is just the way i'm describing it and that energy comes back to you like a like a you like euphoric orgasm uh, your whole body will tingle now that's not for everyone to experience but that's what generally i can experience a few times uh, a week when there's when i wait for a few days for this uh, pseudo identity to build back up and identify with it in its subtle ways again uh, and then i bring awareness to it again and and bang it explodes more of it dissolves and in that moment it dissolves the the life that i gave to it returns back to me and the aliveness that I am returns back to me more and more. And the next time it comes, I'm able to distinguish it and see it even more. So this is what happens. It becomes a snowball effect where the more you see this pseudo-identity within you and slowly each day bring distinguishment and discernment between you and it, your, your awareness grows uh, and eventually returns back to what you already were all along. And that's the cosmic joke. Uh, because the feeling of enlightenment, what you experience, if you ever one day experience it, where this pseudo-identity just fully disappears, is is the state that you feel is actually just normal. It's the real normal that you didn't know that was there all along. And and all the endeavours of this pseudo-identity were, were that everything it wants to be. It's trying to copy you, the true you, and it will never get there. But when it disappears, you realize what everything it was seeking, you already were. You already were whole, perfect, immaculate, untouchable, flawless, you name it. Which is everything this pseudo-identity is trying to be. And it's and it's not, it's an innocent thing, this pseudo-identity. It's not personal because you're not touched anyway. So when you re realize that you're not this touched character, there's nothing personal to it to be seen. You know, it it was only the only personlessness comes from this character, of its own perceptions and and it's uh, how it sees and it's meant to be that way. It'll forever be that way. As I said, you can try to fix it up a little bit, and that's fine. And spend a few years doing that, but ultimately the main goal is to eventually become free once and for all from this pseudo identity. Why you don't need it. You can still operate fine, you know. Unfortunately, I never got to mix with people during that one and a half days when this pseudo-character disappeared, so I wasn't able to test it much. But I'm assuming, you know, who knows, uh, probably maybe would have gone to work. <laughs> I must say that, um, you know, yeah, there was a lot of things that weren't important in the world anymore that obviously were the important of the eyes of this substitute identity when all that was gone. You know, uh, and I'm not trying to say that in a negative way. It's just re realizing that in normal reality, there's lots of things that aren't needed anymore. You know, so I'm not sure whether I would have gone to a job or what I would have done. Who knows? But um, yes. What else was I going to say? Hang on. But our our closest state that we are to enlightenment is when we relax. That's when our pseudo identity it's gone dormant for for, for that time of day. Uh, we might be doing, you know, just relaxing at home, doing nothing, and it's dropped off for a bit. And it, you can say you forget yourself, but not yourself. You forget the pseudo self temporarily. And and what's also forgotten is its concerns for the world. I think he's also something that Jesus says. Uh, 
be, I don't know, be free like the lilies of the valley or something. Or so, yeah, but there's many, many Bible references that make reference to what this um, enlightenment state is like. But what I say is it's actually normal. That's our normal default state, which is identifying and giving life to a pseudo character. Oh, yeah, and that's what I wanted to also say is that there's some people that are probably born, you can say, technically almost fully enlightened, and they don't even real, and they go up to like 20s and 30s and 40s, and they, they haven't even developed this substitute identity yet, much or much. And they're usually the strange people, the black sheep of the family, um, and they're quite consistently peaceful throughout the day and effortlessly deal with challenges in life. Uh, and that's because the less you have a pseudo identity involved and and interfering with your life, the better you'll be off. Be better you will be, uh, because it's disturbed, not you. And if you believe you are this disturbed character, then you'll believe you are disturbed. Now we can't. The only thing we could do is just believe my words, but I don't want you to do that and just believe. All right, maybe we are untouchable. Maybe. Maybe we're, we're whole, ever whole. Maybe it's true, but I don't experience it. But I'm not asking you to believe it. What's more, probably more more important, is just try to see that, is it true what I am saying? That there's that, that your, your pseudo character is disturbed, not you. That's all that's been asked here. <clears throat> don't believe of what it might be like to be in the enlightened state. Because not even I can see it now. It's, it's gone. Uh, after one and a half days... This this one one million kilograms gradually returned over four hours, so that's why I have proof that there's we're not in 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 a, in a wake state yet. Um, we're we're in a continually st a permanent state of subtle disturbance, um, which is continually uh, we're seeing our perception through the eyes of the pseudo identity and not our eyes. And, and we've got many experiences like this throughout our life where the things that used to make our pseudo-identity cry now make us laugh. That's more proof that it's your your perceptions are changing and upgrading, but it's not your perceptions, it's the pseudo-identity's uh, uh, perceptions are changing. Certain parts of it have crumbled away over the years as you get older. And the things that it used to get disturbed on and used to complain about and repetitively make judgments over at 10 years old... Now that you're forty years old, it's like, it's like, and you and you laugh at the little your you know little kid that's having tantrums over the same situation, your ten year old uh, pseudo identity used to have tantrums over, you know. But this is proof. Where there's, there's enough proof already. There's nothing here to, that you need to believe in. Just see the evidence in your own life, and just do one thing and see: is it true? There's something within me that's it's a it's a pseudo it's a made up identity, and I and I hundred percent and a million percent believe it to be who I am at the moment. But is it possible to get a slight glimpse to see? Hang on a minute, maybe it's just an image of me and but not me, and maybe I'm the one giving life to this image, and maybe if I keep seeing this disturbed image identity of myself. And seeing it making the judgments and it being disturbed to its own judgments and doing this groundhog every single day, then maybe I can see if I can feel a slight release by seeing this occurrence each day. And that's the evidence of if you know you're making progress, you should still feel some weight lifted. Um, sometimes it just happens accidentally. Many people probably have already experienced this in their life where a big weight was lifted, usually during a very challenging moment. And they, they all of a sudden said, realized that there's nothing I can do is but accept it, which negated their pseudo identity from complaining about that dramatic situation. Therefore, it just collapsed a part of it. And in that moment, a big weight was lifted. And then you find that the next week, when that same situation or a milder version comes up, similar to it, the, the disturbance isn't there anymore, it's gone. So everyone has this something somewhere in their life. Um, so yeah, but that's that's all that's needed is see if you can bring a distinguishment and discernment within your mind's eye, picture this pseudo identity, and and the ultimate result is see if you can smile at it, do a fake smile for a few months if need be. Like this, fake smile. <laughs> 
And then see if you can do a genuine smile. Uh, but don't try, don't force it, because then it's like your pseudo-identity trying to do it to itself. Just let it come naturally. Uh, but do that's the general direction I'll at least give you. Try to at least get to a smiling point. Because it's the pseudo-identity, if you try this process, that will cut try to become involved and, and try to take itself seriously and then get you to think that it's you taking this pseudo-identity seriously. But that's how it works. Um, it's not doing it deliberately to stuff your life up and make your life more difficult. It's just a reflection of your current state of awareness. Whatever is lacking in your awareness will show up in the unconsciousness. Um, but if, if you, it was light and awareness there, then, then that wouldn't show up. And if it did, it will get burnt up in a nanosecond and get turned up into euphoria. Uh, the pseudo-identity doesn't do things that you're going to be aware of. It's only going to do things that you're not going to be aware of all nearly all the time. And only rare occasions it'll come out and do something and you'll see it and it'll just die. That's the end of that part of, of that pseudo-identity. That's rare. Most 99% of the times it's only going to do actions where... You're going to somewhat believe it to be your actions it's doing. And, and and then, so that's why it needs some sort of discipline and conscious effort on your behalf to see, all right, I'm going to do what this guy Pete, Crazy Pete said on YouTube and, um, and see if I can uh, do some mindfulness, you know. Uh, it, it kind of makes sense, you know. But what I'm saying, it doesn't make sense to everyone, you know. I think probably about 80% of people that watch these videos would, would say, what the hell is this guy talking about? He's... Even though I've got a very bad dialect, I've got a Donald Trump simple dialect, um, and I'm using simple English language um, because I'm talking about the internal world, so I think I've got a booger up on those anyway. <laughs> I'll pick it now, I'll do it later. <laughs> Anyway, so but yeah, I speak as clear, simple. Hang on, a bit of the the shadow on it. <laughs> um, I speak as clear and simple as possible, but because I'm talking about the internal world and I'm talking about us as consciousness, and you don't have experience of yet as you as consciousness, this video doesn't make sense. And that's what happened to me when I first watched Eckhart Tolle for the first four entire years. Not watched him, I watched videos, all his DVDs, and I bought them all. I've given away now. But I list, as I listen to him every single day, after four years, my awareness kicked in. It might have been, actually, it was probably about two years, maybe, I think. And after two years, it kicked in, and my awareness kicked in, and it said, I, I, my, my pseudo-identity screamed out, why doesn't the fuck Eckhart Tolle just say that we are the awareness? And I was trying to get me to identify as me saying that. And then when I... Uh, when I re-listened to Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now and the New Earth again, I, I realised that nearly every second sentence he's referring to us as awareness. But I had no reference whatsoever of what he was talking about. I heard the words as beautifully and clearly, as simply as he describes it, but for two entire years, uh, I just never it dawned on me that he's talking about awareness. I intellectually understand it, but then one day... The awareness kicked in and realized, hey, I'm the awareness that... And, and then my pseudo-identity said that comment. Um, but, yeah, so we're getting to 33 and 33 seconds, the magic number. <laughs> so I'll finish this video, but that's how it is. Um, um, yeah, awareness, just, you won't be able to understand this video, unfortunately. But, you know, just do the best you can in other things. Just learn, um, I don't know, just learn counselling or... Um, learn time out, you know, and learn to focus on different things, learn simple things that you can do, always do what you can do, not what you can't do, that's the fastest way to, to, to becoming free, and um, yeah, because if it's difficult, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of difficulty, I've never really done anything much that's difficult um, when it comes to this awareness path, uh, I don't think it's necessary, and ultimately if it is difficult, to a greater extent, it's the pseudo-identity experiencing the difficult, not you. So it's becoming twined in it. But there is some situations where maybe... I know there's some people that do exercises in order to put yourself out of the... How, how's it described? Put yourself out of the comfort zone, as it's called. And, and 
and some yes, some progress can be made that way, but I'm not a big fan of those techniques. I don't think it's really necessary. I think it's enough just to do your daily, go about your daily life day to day and occasionally just notice what's happening within you. As Eckhart Tolle describes, try to be the ever alert guardian of what's going on within you, as he says. Uh, but that's what it's ultimately about. That's what I've been trying to do the last 15 years is be the ever alert guardian of what's going on within me. And, you know, it's from, from when I was about 28, that was that it encountered uh, for like 40 disturbances a day. That was my homework for the day. Okay. After a few weeks, I realized, all right, there's probably around 40 disturbances a day my pseudo identity is having. And let's see if I can do some homework. And, and it did get sort of worse. As the first few years were difficult, my, my substitute identity got even more disturbed by, by trying to look at it. Uh, but that's what happens. Excuse me, I'll just take this alarm off. So, but that's what can happen. It can get even more disturbed, and but that's you know it can be a little bit of a difficult process at the start. But just um, you know, see if you can just do your best, you know, to maybe uh, you know get talk about it to other people. What's going on? Share these ideas with similar people that have the same experiences, and it becomes a lot easier. I had no one in the first few years. Uh, it was after like two or three years I joined the Eckhart Tolle meetup group. And I finally met people who actually spoke my language. I was by myself for the first three years. So I did it very hard. And now the young kids of today, after everyone knows Eckhart Tolle now. Back then, there was only a handful of people that knew about Eckhart Tolle. Um, I don't know what year that was. It was back in, I don't know what year. But it was like 15 years ago. There was hardly any people that knew about this. Very small groups of Eckhart Tolle. Now you've got like 20-year-olds that learn mindfulness and Eckhart Tolle stuff and all that, you know. But another good teacher I recommend is uh, Muji, M-O-O-J-I. He's got millions of YouTube clips for free, and he's very clear. And 99, the reason why I don't watch him anymore, but why I used to watch him a bit, is because 99% of his language, he gives reference to who we are, which is untouchable, impeccable perfection. And, and whenever he, he always gives very clear language... And simple, funny language to distinct, help us distinguish both of us. Uh, very rarely I've seen him use words that that call our identity in the reference points of the pseudo identity. Very rare. Um, but I don't like to criticize. But you know, there is sometimes Eckhart Tolle. Um, I didn't like watching him after a while because he does sometimes make reference to identity and he says that we become unpeaceful and then we become upset and that's not true. Uh, our pseudo identity becomes unpeaceful and our pseudo... Now I know Eckhart Tolle knows the truth. I've had an experience with him during a seminar once. He looked at me for 90 minutes and I had an awakening moment right at the end of it and he, and he knew that it was going to happen. So I know he's very aware and I know he's... Um, you know, he describes everything in his book to a perfection. There's nothing, you know, but just sometimes during his talks, um, that's the only sort of criticism I have a little bit is that he gives slight references to, I don't know if he does it anymore because I haven't watched him in many years, but he used to give slight references as to our identity being this disturbed character. And I don't, I don't like watching that anymore. I only want to hear people that speak clear, simple language this is you, untouchable, and this is the pseudo character, which is the touched one. And let's let's see if we can sort this uh, untanglement out. And always be disciplined to speak like that. Always correct. Eckhart told many times he corrects his language, and to, when he slips up, everyone does it. You know, there's many words that I probably just said in this in this thirty odd minutes that where I made slight references to myself being, you know, this pseudo identity. It happens. It's so accustomed to our language. You know, nearly every drama episode you see is the is the drama of the pseudo identity. So you're watching illusion play up on the screen. You know, which is why I I, I can hardly stomach watching a drama anymore. You know, it's uh, I remember at the Eckhart Tolle retreat we watched um, Wayne Dyer's movie, which had a bit of drama scenes in it, Ambition to Meaning, or and it's got some other name as well. There was three thousand people at Hyatt Coolum. And people were laughing at the drama scenes. <laughs> and that's because their perception doesn't take it for their own perception anymore. And and they just found it extremely funny. And it was very strange to hear that for the first time. Because back then, you know, I was still into watching 
my pseudo identity was still into watching drama movies and it was strange to hear this in a dark room with 3,000 people and hear this big group of people cr laughing at the at the serious drama scenes. So that was very strange. And then, you know, it took years later to realise that's why they're laughing. It's because, you know, they're, they're, their awareness is so high that they're just, it's just funny to watch these drama, drama scenes because they're not identified with it anymore. You know? Okay. And that should be the end of this video. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe if you want. And also, uh, yeah, please make a, um, a question in the comments if you want anything to answer. But of course, as you know, if you just become still, you'll come up with the answer yourself. There's nothing to ask in a way. But if you want still to ask a question, uh, please feel free to ask. And uh, I'll see if I can make a video on it. See ya.